Welcome back to the channel. My name is Colleen and today I'm going to be making barbecue sauce with a bit of whiskey and some huckleberries that I've managed to acquire. Right now the huckleberries are um, on in our region but I haven't had a chance to get out to them so a friend um, has picked these and I am really grateful to have them. They're frozen and so the first step for me is to thaw them out and make sure that they're reasonably dry. So once that's done, I'll be back and we'll get started. I have everything ready to go here within easy reach now and this beginning part goes along pretty quickly. You start off with two small onions or you know one large onion into a little bit of canola oil, maybe two tablespoons full, in a big pot, and we're just going to do a bit of flooding here. Not too much, we just want them to be a little bit translucent, and I'm going to actually turn this burner down just a bit, because it doesn't need to be that high. And I'm going to continue to stir because I don't really want these to brown. I just want them to get translucent, which doesn't take too long. And when I think they're about halfway there, which probably right about now, I'm going to add to this four cloves of garlic that have been chopped. Into the pan we go because we want them to enjoy the sweat as well. And just to get these aromatics going. And yeah, as I said, we'll just keep stirring for a couple minutes. I was told recently that I talk entirely too much on my videos. And I chatter an awful lot. And I realize that I do. I'm a storyteller. Um, probably if my videos say how to, then I'll be giving you exact instructions without the chatter. But if they don't, you're probably in for a family story or a bit about the community I live in or a recent experience or even my grandbabies. So that will give you an idea of which ones you could tune into um, that don't contain so much chatter. So I think these are good now. So I'm going to um, go around the other side of the camera and I'm going to start adding the other ingredients to the pot. They are pretty simple. To start with, I'm going to add... Mm, I'm going to add this Crown Royal Canadian Whiskey. It's a small one, 200 milliliters, which comes out to about three quarters of a cup. And I'm going to add one cup of apple cider vinegar. Oh, the lens is not fogging up on you there. Now I'm going to give that a stir with the vinegar and the whiskey in there. Now you could also use bourbon in here, I'm sure, or you could skip this step altogether. It is not necessary, it's just something that uh, changes a, a barbecue sauce up a little bit. Now I have one cup of pretty firmly packed brown sugar. I'm going to stir that in. Two cups of ketchup. You can use whatever brand you like here. I have a preference, um, but I don't think that it really matters with all the other prof uh, flavor profiles that are in here. If you buy the store brand or whether you buy a name brand. 
And now I'm going to add one tablespoon of kosher salt and one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. And just stir as we go. And lastly, in the herb section, well, no, I guess it's not last, but I'm going to add two bay leaves, which I will remove at the end of the process. And I'm going to swipe by you here. And I'm going to add one chopped jalapeno with the seeds and membranes removed. And I do that because my husband doesn't like heat and so I can get away with one but really the recipe should have two. You could also in its place maybe add some red pepper flakes that would pep it up a bit and then last I've got two pounds of huckleberries that I've defrosted and drained and if huckleberries are scarce where you live, you're probably going to pay a premium for them if you're buying them from pickers. So that makes this barbecue sauce something for special occasions only. Because I think the going rate where I live is around $10 a pound. So there's two pounds in here or four cups. And after picking huckleberries, for a day, you understand that the people that are doing it have earned that money because it's never, uh, never on flat ground. It's never where it's convenient. So their bugs are bad. Where we live, the smoke is bad. The roads to get there are horrible. So if you uh, if you believe in buying from pickers then yes, don't shortchange them. They've earned every bit of it. Now we're gonna bring this to a boil and we're going to boil it 30 minutes so that we can reduce it and it will become thick. After that, when it's there, I'll come back. Well, here I am back this uh, sauce has definitely reduced by about half and I don't know if you can see or not but it's pretty chunky and it will thicken some as it cools so I think we're in a good um, spot here to carry on so I am going to blend this up now there's a couple different ways you can do this if you're really cautious and you're not wearing your brand new blouse you can try to do it with one of these handheld blenders. Now if you don't have one of these, you could definitely use a regular blender, but maybe do it in a couple of batches. And when you're done, you may, oh sorry, and when you're done you may have to uh, take the contents and put them back in the pot and reheat them just so they're hot enough. I'm going to go with it because I don't mind if it has a few chunks in it. Um, if you would like it to be really smooth, of course you can carry on and do it um, to whatever suits your fancy, but I think that's pretty good for me for today. I'm just going to move this out of the way into the empty sink and I'm going to give this a stir just to double check that that's where I want it to be and you may have noticed now that it's thickened up quite a bit more just blending the berries in. Now I'm going to start to fill the jars. So I've got my jars heating in the sink so I'll be reaching back and forth to bring out the hot jars. I think I'll bring two at a time. 
and I've got a funnel, but I don't always use the funnel. Maybe I'll give you a little more show here. So I'm just going to uh, use a, I think this is a quarter cup measure, but whatever you can handle. And I'm going to fill these jars within about a half inch of the top. And there's the first jar. I'm going to reach over here and grab a lid that I've had on the stove in the hot water. And I'm just going to wipe down the rim because this is going to go into a hot canner so everything should be hot. Let's go on fingertip tight. On to the next jar. And there we go. Now, because I've used huckleberries in this recipe and not blueberries, it has a really strong berry flavor and would best be suited with maybe venison or beef rather than something lighter that it would completely take over like chicken. It would probably be okay with pork too. Um, it's a pretty strong recipe. I have added liquid smoke to uh, these recipes before but I find that uh, this particular recipe you definitely don't need to add um, the liquid smoke to unless the smoke is what the flavor you're going for. You can see this goes pretty quickly. And I am just hurrying a little here because you probably don't want me want to watch me fill every jar. And, but I'm going to. Because this is what's easy for me. And I'm happy to have you along. So I hope that wherever you are, you're doing well. We have forest fires raging all over the uh, province of British Columbia. And so most places here, and particularly, well, not particularly, but as well as the place that I live, we really haven't seen the sun for about almost two months it feels like. At this time we are not in any imminent danger from the forest fires but uh, people that we care about are and so we're praying for them and um, hoping that they will come out of this unscathed because we have lost a couple small towns um, to these wildfires and and it's heartbreaking for the people that have, you know, that are suffering these huge losses. I'm just going to get these right and the seals on. I better check that one. I'll double check this one. I don't know about you guys, but now and then I forget to check my seals and then I find myself trying to second guess whether or not I did it or I didn't do it. Um, if you find yourself in that circumstance, you put, should probably assume that you didn't do it and take the ring and seal back off and um, clean them both and then reattach them. Especially, I mean, if you were just going to do this to put it into your fridge to keep it in your refrigerator, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you are doing this for long-term storage, then you definitely want to have a nice clean seal on your jar. I guess this little bit that's left in this jar will go on on our dinner tonight. I'm making pork ribs actually, so we'll find out how it's going to taste on pork. So there we go. Now I've got these jars all ready. I'm going to 
drop them into a water bath canner and I'm going to water bath can them for 10 minutes just to make sure that they seal and um, and I'll have them ready to put in the cupboard. If, if I count the cost of uh, the berries and the alcohol that had to go into these plus the other ingredients, I would say that these are very, very dear. So you don't want to just give them away to, uh, to the neighbor unless you really, really love the neighbor because these probably cost, these five jars probably cost around $40 to make. That's kind of obscene, actually, when you think about it. But as a special guest for a gift for somebody that you really care about, this would be amazing. So save it for somebody special or just keep it for yourself because I'm sure that you deserve it. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video and that if you have, you will like it and share it with your friends and consider subscribing to the channel. So until next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.